Jerry Hanna, you're a consultant oncologist with the Queen's University of Belfast. What is the scale of the problem with lung cancer? Lung cancer, unfortunately, is the biggest killer for both men and women, uh, and it outstrips, unfortunately, all the other cancer types. Uh, it currently kills, each year in Europe, over 270 persons, and that's equivalent to two jumbo jet planes of people dying in Europe a day. So it really is a healthcare uh, priority, an emergency, so to speak, and is entirely an unacceptable level of cause of death. With some screening programmes, there is a danger of overdiagnosis. Is that a problem with screening for lung cancer? With any screening program where we try to detect cancer at an earlier stage, we will pick up those lesions which are not cancerous, or even if they are indeed cancerous, are unlikely to cause that person harm in their lifetime. And that's the principle of overdiagnosis. This happens with lung cancer screening. But that rate is very low, less than a couple of percent, and it's certainly uh, uh, comparable to say, for instance, the similar overdiagnosis rates that there would be with breast cancer screening programs, which are well established and also very accepted publicly. It's something that patients would have to be counseled carefully about taking part in a screening program, but it is uh, one of the acceptable, uh, acceptable almost toxicities of screening that we know uh, we're, we're getting better at reducing that rate of overdiagnosis as lung cancer screening gets better at detecting lung cancer at an earlier stage. And what about exposure to radiation? Some patients will be concerned that by having a CT scan, they're exposing themselves to radiation. So lung cancer screening works best with the use of what's called low-dose or ultra-low-dose CT scanning, which is actually a very small-dose radiation. It's less than the third radiation we get every year from the, the background community we live in. It's almost equivalent to a return flight from Europe to Japan. So it's a very acceptable level of radiation, uh, and that really shouldn't be a concern at stopping people taking part in lung cancer screening or indeed considering implementing as a policy across Europe. So an issue that's been raised at several meetings now is the difficulty in reaching some uh, groups, particularly those on maybe lower incomes or more socially excluded groups. So unfortunately in lung cancer, as in many other uh, health issues, there is an equality of access and equality of take up of the offers of treatment or indeed screening programs. This is particularly the case in lung cancer screening where if you have to travel a long distance to get that CT scan, people simply do not take it up. Now, some excellent work by Dr. Matthew Everson in, the, in Manchester has shown that if you bring the CT scanner to people, i.e. put the CT scanner in a supermarket car park, people are, uh, very rapidly take up that screening program, are much more likely to take, take part in that screening program, and they get the people that are most at risk of developing lung cancer, which is the whole point of a lung cancer screening program. Thias Oudkirk, Scientific Director for the Centre for Medical Imaging in the Netherlands. Today you published an EU position statement on lung cancer screening. What were your main findings? Now the main findings were based on all the existing evidence available today. Um, 22 experts in lung cancer screening in eight European countries came to this statement and agreed on everything written in that statement that is published today in the Lancet Topology. Uh, we think that this statement uh, will guide the way, will pave the way for the governments to take the next steps for the implementation of lung cancer screening in the coming years. Is there a preferred type of screening? Yes, indeed. There are many forms, of course, of screening. There are many methodologies. And also this statement comes with the fact that there is only proof for CT screening uh, with a certain methodology. So not with diameter measurements, but with volume approach and growth rate, rate evaluation. And also the introduction of an indeterminate category. So you would be quite dismissive of any other type of screening method? Yeah, the, the, this group of experts state that the only way to uh, cope with the overdiagnosis that is everywhere is to use this very precise way of evaluating the nodules. Only one out of 100 nodules is really lung cancer so as an average. And that means that on the long end, 
you have to reassure all the others. So that is 99% of people that they absolutely have no malignant nodules. So the screening method ha has to focus on this high negative predictive value. I with the old approaches, you will have 25% of false positives. And that means that you cannot implement the screening method. With our methodology, you go up to 98% that you can safely send home. And you will end up only with 2% that you have to further follow up. And it has a high chance of having lung cancer. Is Europe heading in the right direction? Um, in terms of screening, Europe is starting to head in the right direction um, with the position paper that was just launched today showing the benefit. And I think that it's something that has to come on board now and get it rolled out, get everything in place so that we can really help um, tackle this disease, which is killing more of our loved ones than any other cancer type across the EU and within my own country, which is Ireland. So I think, yeah, we're getting a conversation going, which is always a good thing. And hopefully we can bring it through now and start saving patients' lives. How important is it to identify those who have early stage lung cancer? Early stage uh, diagnosis is very important because the earlier you detect any cancer type, as is the case with lung cancer, you're more likely to be eligible for surgery. So if you can have surgery for lung cancer, your survival rate would tend to be much better. And what's happening now without sort of a screening program in place, the majority of patients are presenting with late stage disease and what that means is they're ineligible for surgery. Usually it's something like chemotherapy, they might be eligible for targeted drugs, but the survival rate overall for lung cancer in terms of five years is only about between about 15%, 15 to 20% depending on your location. So if you can get patients in earlier with screening, get them at a point that you can operate, then you are going to see changes in those survival rates and really shift the curve and give people back that quality of being able to have overcome lung cancer and continuing on with their lives for hopefully a very long time. There's a lot of awareness today about things like breast cancer, prostate cancer. Do you think there's the same level of awareness when it comes to lung cancer? No, there's not. Um, I think lung cancer has always been the elephant in the room, that people know there's a problem, they'll talk about it to tick a box, but really there's a lack of follow through. Um, I mean, you can see that there's fantastic campaigns that are out for things like Pinktober, Movember, stuff like that. You know, pinks for breasts, blues for prostate. But when it comes from lung cancer, we're like the cousin nobody wants to know. And there's not really any consensus across Europe to get a you know, an awareness campaign out there. And I mean, we really need all the stakeholders to come together at the European level, get a consistent message, get something that can be um, rolled out across all the EU states to really increase the awareness of lung cancer, what the symptoms are, what can be done, what's the risk factors, and also to make patients aware that you don't have to be a smoker to get lung cancer, you can be a non-smoker and get it. And I think all of those things together would really, really then help and kind of rise above the, the noise of other things. Because when you think about it, we have to compete with those other very successful campaigns for other common cancers to get our message across. So it really has to be everybody together and a very consistent message across the entirety of the EU to make a difference.